and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, we will get an update from Quincy College President, Dr. Rick DeCristofaro. First, though, as always, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. And currently in Quincy, it's beautiful. Partly sunny out there, 66 degrees right now. Be pleasant this afternoon with temperatures in the mid-70s. For this evening, clearing out and temperatures dip to the upper 50s. Really a nice uh, last week of September coming up for the rest of the week. It looks like it'll stay dry. Tomorrow's kind of a carbon copy of today. Sun and clouds with again highs in the mid-70s. Just a little bit cooler on Wednesday. More sunshine though with a high of 71. Then things really start to cool off a bit here on Thursday with a mix of sun and clouds. Highs Thursday only in the mid 60s, but again, staying dry for most of this week. 66 and partly sunny in Quincy right now. In the news today, investigators say it appears that a man and a woman intentionally placed themselves along the MBTA red line tracks in Quincy early this morning and came in contact with the electrified third rail. A train operator reported the bodies of a man and a woman along the northbound side of the tracks just north of the Wollaston Station. Just after 6 o'clock this morning, a train service had to be halted. Officials say the victims were pronounced dead at the scene. Buses replaced red line trains between Braintree and JFK UMass. However, the commuter rail was not affected. The identities of those victims have not been released and the incident remains under investigation. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch supports a proposal to conduct a review of city salaries. It's an effort to retain current workers and attract new employees. The City Council last week passed a resolution by Ward 4 Councilor Brian Palmucci calling for that wage review. The mayor says it's been challenging for cities and towns to compete with the private sector. We've already been working with an outside firm on some of the levels uh, particularly department heads, department managers, um, and uh, we and we know from our own comparisons with other communities that we're we're very competitive on certain areas like police and fire, um, and and several other areas. But there are other areas like the ones I mentioned that we are we are on the lower tier, and that's becoming a challenge um, to fill these positions. Mayor says an outside firm is already working with the city for that wage review and will issue a report soon. Quincy Ward 4 Councilor Brian Pamucci will be appearing before the Governor's Council on October 5th after he was nominated to be an Associate Justice in the District Court. Pamucci says if his nomination is approved, he'll have to resign as a City Councilor. If a vacancy occurs in the first year of a term, uh, that triggers a special election for vac under the charter. If a, if a vacancy occurs in the second year of a term, then the council would uh, appoint someone to serve out the remainder of the term. So um, mathematically speaking, since the governor, Governor Charles Baker is the one who nominated me and he won't be serving past January, I, if I am um, confirmed, wouldn't be serving past January. So I believe potentially that would trigger a special election. Um, in terms of what that looks like, that would be a public process as this body would need to vote on the election calendar. So this body would determine when that election is, uh, the preliminary, you know, the nomination papers, the, the preliminary and the uh, final election. So I'm not gone yet. So let's not, um, you know, let's not start too soon, but um, yeah. I guess that's it. That's the, that would be the process, hypothetically, if I were to vacate my position. City Clerk Nicole Crispo says if Palmucci resigns at the end of the year, a special election would be needed to fill the remainder of his term through next year. The preliminary would be held in January and the final election in February. The winner would be able to run for the full two-year term in next year's city election. Pamucci's been a councillor since 2010. He says he does remain focused on that job until his judgeship nomination is determined. Well, the Norfolk County Register of Deeds Suits for Success program recently made a pretty big donation of clothing to interfaith social services here in Quincy. Register Bill O'Donnell says that racks of clothing and shoes were donated to interfaith's 
Career Closet, which provides professional clothing for people to wear on job interviews and at the workplace. O'Donnell developed suits for success to help agencies such as Interfaith provide appropriate attire for their clients. Donations of new or gently used clothing may be dropped off at the Registry of Deeds in Dedham Square or brought directly to Interfaith Social Services on Adams Street in Quincy. The state has awarded Quincy College a $750,000 grant to expand its life sciences program. Those funds will be used to expand the biotechnology lab at the college with new equipment and supplies. The state also awarded Quincy Public Schools almost $184,000 to create a partnership with Quincy College for students who are seeking a career path in the life sciences industry. Also for additional teacher training in that field. Those funds come from the state's Life Sciences Center. Well, it's looking much greener outside the Point Webster Middle School in Quincy Point these days. Upgrades to the playground and the landscaping are underway thanks to $500,000 that was included in the state budget for that project. Speaker Ron Mariano a Quincy Point native and former Point Webster teacher himself, managed to include the funds in the recently approved state budget. Now, the plans also call for new playground equipment and landscaping and lighting improvements. Point Webster was built in 1917 and houses 600 students. That is our check of news today. Coming up, we sit down with Quincy College President Rick DeCristofaro next. Welcome back. We're really pleased to get these periodic updates on Quincy College from the president, Rick DeCristofaro, who has stopped on by once again to tell us how the uh, fall semester is going so far. Hey, Rick, how are you? Good. Nice to see you, and thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Hard yeah. to believe we're talking about fall, right? I know. I know. I asked you, when's summer go? <laughs> Still waiting. <laughs> oh, did it happen already? <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, actually, it doesn't slow down at the college over summertime, does it? No, it really doesn't. Yeah. You know, and, and the good thing is we have... Uh, uh, four or five summer programs that really have connected a lot down in Plymouth with ac aquaculture uh, and in uh, Quincy with uh, biology, uh, bio biotech for yeah. uh, students. So we had 25 students come in. Uh, and for teachers, you know, so it's a biotech academy. So oh, okay. yeah, those two programs going on, and then a great program with early college high school, bringing 65 North Quincy and Quincy students over to the college uh, to take uh, courses in either uh, computers uh, or public speaking. Mm. So uh, it was really, really, really yeah. a good summer to, to get them in you know, and acclimate them more to what Quincy College can do for them. That's super. Very good. Yeah. Speaking of biotech, we yeah. heard during the news, uh, three quarters of a million dollar grants. Yeah. yeah. Really great grants, and I, I credit uh, the, the grant writer one that we have uh, at, at the college. Oh, do you need more? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. two or three more would okay. be really good. Okay. Um, but but uh, Tracy went over to Quincy Public Schools, and we've really developed a really nice partnership with uh, the science department heads, Eddie Smith, uh, who was at that time was science coordinator, as well as uh, uh, others. And we created the 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 just the discussion about. Uh, biotechnology at both high schools. So Quincy High School had uh, a, a lab that we, in this grant, uh, offers them a lot more updated yes. uh, equipment, which yep. is great. And then at North, to actually establish a biotech uh, lab over there. And okay. what, what the college does is we, we got the grant, uh, which is great for them, but it's also we provide professional development. Uh, for the for their instructors, yes. so that that's a nice, really great bridge. And you know, we had the department heads over uh, for lunch last year and said, "Well, you can come over and teach a teach a course here if you, if you like." You know, and again, we don't expect all of these students all of a sudden to come to Quincy College. No, if they sure. decided to, I think that would be really good. Yes, but it's just because we were connected to the community in a way that what we do is for for our students. Well, it's the true mission, the core of what Quincy College is all about, right? Absolutely is. Community. Yeah, absolutely yeah. correct. Um, and that field, that biotechnology is Oof. is growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah. Actually, Quincy College was kind of the head of the curve when that lab was first installed, also with a grant. Yeah, you're right. That was yeah. 2013, yeah. I think. Yeah. Bruce Van Dyke, I think. Yes, yeah. yeah. He, he retired. Uh, he must have heard I was coming. <laughs> but uh, now he retired, and he was terrific. Yeah. And and there we, we right now have Dr. Uh, Iso Bayala, and he really runs the same type of program, and he's, he's just incredible yeah. with students, so uh, we're lucky. But they tend to be unique, 
you know so um, I think uh, the program is is awesome uh, and like Bruce when he was there they're in charge and yeah. they give forward so we yeah. have a lot of great partners you know with that as well you know right in Cambridge you know so a lot of the clients that may come mm -hmm. you know our clients that go right to the world of work yeah it's exactly it's a field where they can um, they can launch their career yeah. right after graduation yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and given these past two years um, with the pandemic I think mm. it's there's only going to be an increased need uh, for more no, you're absolutely right. And then so many other areas, too, with workforce development that, that we're exploring and making sure with the health care, mm -hmm. especially, you know, looking at what we're doing with uh, Jewish Vocational Services at 122 Arlington Street in Boston, providing the educational services for their clients mm. who, again, go right from there right to the world of work. So yes. uh, healthcare is healthcare and biotech is uh, something that we're really working hard on. Yep, that and also the trades. I you know I keep saying there's going to be a tremendous need um, in the trades. I know it's not something the college is No, but we on. did that. The, the I, college did right. that when, you know, certainly with the school system yes. a lot and I think what happened was the revenue, the real revenue wasn't there. Right. Uh, so, so little by little, there weren't a lot of people signing up for it, yep. and then and so the college said, eh, "I don't think so." Right, but the high school is poised perfectly well, to take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, you got people over there like you know, like the the superintendent, assistant superintendent, but uh, Keith uh, Sagala mm -hmm. um, does an incredible job with with making sure that those students at the freshman year, you know, sample all the careers yes. and then decide as they go. Right, exactly. Uh, is everything at the college back in person now? No more remote? Interesting. You yeah. know, the last time you talked it was more online. We have more students right now in person okay. on on campus yep. than we certainly did last year or the year before. So so that that's a really good sign. Yeah. You know, good sign for us. And and our new students are up about 24%, which is really great. But then the flip side is the continuing students are down 13 percent. So, so hmm. it's clear we, we, we we're making a difference with these new students coming in. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is to keep them and make sure they continue on, especially now with the baccalaureate programs. Yes, yes, of which there are at least two that I know right of. Now, yeah. Right now are two, okay. uh, business, yep. um, Bachelor of Science in Business and uh, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. Okay. The Computer Science starts in January, so we're really getting that out because we just got the final approval uh, from the New England Council of Higher Education. We got that on Friday, and then we had the Department of Higher Education approval uh, quite some time ago. So now. You know, now you can fully um, market the program okay. before you had to say until it's approved by. Right, right. So, but th those two are great. And, uh, so, so enroll now for those? Pardon me? You can enroll now for those? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. which is terrific. So for those two, we'll get going. And um, I mean, it's the business uh, degree. There's uh, over 80 students right now wow. in that program. So that that's a good thing. And now with computer science, we hope we get the same thing. Uh, whether it's more difficult, you don't really know until you market. Uh, these programs yeah. to see what, what the we know there's an interest. I mean, we do all our, our work to make sure we're doing the right thing sure. uh, for the workplace. Uh, so now psychology is one that that we're beginning to to think about um, beginning in in January. Uh, excuse me, uh, the fall of uh, 23. 23. Okay, so about a year from now. Yeah. Interesting. Um, another, I think, result of the pandemic is mm. you know there is going to be a need for people yes. in the healthcare field, mental health care yes, field Yes, you're especially. absolutely right. Yeah. We have a great grant with Mass General Hospital uh, looking at our nursing program and, and creating uh, a strand on, on mental health mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because a lot of the, the, there's a lot of openings, number one, in that field yes. because it's tough behavioral yes. health. Um, but also it's, a, it's, a great, it's great for our nursing program because now we can extend the strand, right. another strand to it. Yeah. Speaking of the nursing program, yeah. I always like to ask you yes. when you're over, uh, what's the current status? It's doing great. Okay. It's doing great. I mean, we, we dropped uh, probably eh, maybe five or six students. You know, many, many students come in, and there are some students that either drop out for, for whatever reason. Um, so uh, we're down just a little bit, but it's, it's solid. And uh, we're looking, you know, we, we have an opening for an associate a nurse mm. um, a director in, in Quincy. So if you're available... You can, you're, you're welcome to apply for that job. Okay. I'm talking about you. Me personally? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me as your nurse, nah, believe me. Me either. <laughs> so if we, when we fill that, you know, then we can go for full approval. Okay. Because the NCLEX scores for the last two years are perfect okay. for both the PN program and our RN program. So we're, we're really back on track. Because that's really the, what the state looks at mostly, right, is those test scores. Yeah. 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 They sure look at enrollment. 
But you're right, test scores yep. first. Okay. If you're doing well, great. If you're not, well, you know, they, they say hello. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that will lead to full accreditation. Uh, yeah. Reaccreditation. And then you can actually. then you can yeah. have different programs. Yeah. Then you can have a part time program. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have a weekend program. Right now we're we're only allowed to just do this straight program that we have. So okay. That'd be a pleasure. Um, is the college facing the workforce shortage like service sectors all across the country? It is, really? um, and I think it's it's a part of the, the great resignation as well yep. when, when people, both people that have worked for the college for quite some time and then others are here for a month or two and somehow feel the grass is, is greener, mm. you know, uh, whether it's salary uh, or whatever, but um, our work on the culture of the college, I think, proves that we're not as we're not facing it as much as maybe other institutions are. Okay. You know, it's small, it's caring. We take care of uh, our employees. Uh, you know, first students, Certainly. but employees. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping that we don't have as much of that in the future. Um, but but we feel it. We feel it from time Do you to really? time. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I know four new board members were just appointed not too long yeah. ago, and uh, they have community roots mm -hmm. uh, and they have roots in the the field of development and, and industry. Yeah. So I'm curious if that's maybe something that you're looking at in the future is to as yeah to it, it, as the a new, new people. Yeah, Philip Chong. Yeah. You know who I'm sure you know. Super guy. Yes. Yeah. And um, Sean Galvin. Mm -hmm. You know Sean Galvin, another construction person, a construction person, and D J McKinnon. You know, contractor, significant, and Kyle Swist, uh, who is with uh, he's the he's the talent uh, manager at um, at at um, I'm going to forget, of course, and it's um, Granite Telecom. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry, Sorry Rob, Rob Hale and Company. Sorry, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we these these I think these gentlemen, and there's a nice balance of yeah. female and ma and male on on uh, the the board, but I think these gentlemen bring a different perspective you know, to, to the college, you know, a, a real business perspective and, you know, a, you know, in, within contracts and legal. Mm. So they, they, they bring, I think, a, a real lot of great experience to us. Yeah, well, Philip, of course, from Quincy Asian Resources, um, mm -hmm. so may have a different insight into the immigrant community than You're others You're absolutely would. right. Yeah. And, you know, we have a great grant with the with, um, Office of, of, of Refugee uh, in, in uh, Massachusetts, mm. the state. Uh, we have that. Uh, we have a great um, four-year uh, Department of Education uh, grant that brings in uh, EL and HiSET uh, students. So right now there are 85 of those students over there. And, really? And, yeah, and there were 65 last year. And what we need to do strong, much more strongly, is to is to make sure that these students we keep in touch with them, our advisors, our admission, you know, to let them know that that you can go from where you are and come right to the college, either into our EL program or to any of the other academic programs. But yeah. keep that pathway, that transition open uh, for them. So that that's another really great grant. But and you're right, you know, someone like a Philip, mm -hmm. he knows his way around. Uh, the community and yes. sometimes can reach out uh, much more than we can. So he could be a, a great help. Yeah, what a great opportunity for those folks really to to find the American dream that they were looking yeah, for. Yeah, right? a lot low income, yeah. underserved, uh, minority. Uh, so it it you walk into that classroom, uh, which I do as much as I possibly you really? can. You know why? Because you go in. I miss that from superintendent. I was just going to say. You know, I miss that. Coming you know? from the public schools, yeah. But you go into these classrooms, and and there's the the students. You know the. They're just so thankful to be there. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they begin to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's why you're right. Our mission, that's why we're here. Yeah. We should talk about um, some interesting statistics. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion, as you know, about why should taxpayer dollars be spent on, mm. on students that yeah. aren't from Quincy. Well, uh, almost a quarter of the student body. Yeah, right is, now it is, is over 20, over 25, well, just about 25 percent, almost 600 of our students. Yeah come directly residents uh, uh, residents of Quincy yeah. so so that that's it's a pretty powerful message that's an entire public school building exactly essentially. Yeah. yeah yeah so that, that is a really great statistic and it was that way uh, it's been that way for the last three years is it really yeah, yeah. And, and just the same as you know when we talk about the good stuff our, our budget you know a balanced budget yep. in 21 and 22 and 23 uh, actually 20 21 22 and then this year all balanced budgets and looking forward to a lot of great initiatives has the uh, federal student loan forgiveness program impacted the college at all, Rick? Or, or no, 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 not at all. Okay, not at all. Um, financial aid is still strong and still offered, right? Yeah, yeah, financial aid is strong. We have a couple of bumps in the road. We have um, uh, a uh, consultant. You see, because what's new for me mm -hmm. still is all the compliance 
level. So we need to make sure that we're complying with everything we need to. Right. You know, in all areas, even the facilities. You know, the, oh, interesting. The, with the Clery Act, you know, there, there's so many things that I'm learning that really need to be reinforced. Mm. You know, and financial aid is one of them. It's so, uh, you know, Title IV, it's just and so incredibly mm -hmm. important. So we're working hard at it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the facility itself, um, how is it holding up? <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, Seville is in, is in good shape. Yep. Um, all our science programs are there. Uh, Cottage Park in Plymouth is in good shape, you know, really good shape. Uh, and President's Place, you know, we're running out of space at President's mm -hmm. Place, you know, uh, whether it be a combination of office space and classroom space, you know. But two grants, you know, both uh, working in healthcare with CNA. Uh, and uh, so we, we, we finished a lab, a new lab at President's Place oh, okay. from, from grants. Tell me about the, and I'm not going to call them x-ray technicians, I've been chastised. Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, radiologic technology Yes, program. yeah, sounds great. Because there's more than x-rays now, right? It, it's so many. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing when you talk about the world of work in our mission you know the, the, you you get you go through this program you can do anything within that area yeah. it's so many whether it's a hospital clinic you know these uh, urgent care centers now have a lot of this technology right too, there so, yeah yeah yep. yeah so uh, we start that in January okay yeah you know, we're marketing that uh, we'll begin to really subtly market as soon as we know we're all set with the build with the lab okay you know then we fully market so but but that's gonna be at the that ground level in Seville Hall okay which is a perfect place you know, for, you know, for, we're all the, you have to work with radiation uh, experts yes. to make sure that you're not doing some things you shouldn't. So of course, yeah. it's a perfect place Is it really? uh, for it. And that'll be done, uh, I think mid-December it'll be done. Okay. Um, but another real, real great plus for us. So uh, as enrollment increases, we hope, but if it doesn't increase the way we want, we have these other programs and initiatives that will supplement and support uh, as we go forward. Yeah. Uh, dual enrollment with the Quincy Public Schools has been ongoing for some time now. Yeah. But now you're expanding it. Yeah, we are. We, you know, there's new, uh, Milton is, is new this year. Uh, Marshfield is new this year. Weymouth is oh, new this year. Well. And they're catching on to something that, and again, I wish these students would all come to uh, of course. college. Yeah. But again, it's our mission. So we're out there with the, to these communities. And uh, it's such a great benefit to uh, students fine when they go to college, uh, but for parents to save a significant amount of money as they, as they look uh, to the future for their, for their students. So, no, there's, there's a lot. We, we, we had some grants, we did some scholarships, but there's, there's, um, um, there'll, be, there'll be a further, I mean, Hanover has been in a while, Silver Lake, um, uh, let's see, Archbishop Williams, okay. you know, so they've all been a part of it, and they keep expanding the courses that they offer their students for dual enrollment. Yeah. Uh, do they approach you, or, or you do you approach them, or is it a combination? Of it's a two? combination. Yeah. We visit the schools. Like okay. we'll, we'll probably visit eh, maybe 10 or 12 uh, schools, you know, uh, with, with marketing, with, with uh, the president, of course, uh, with guidance, with our advisors, admission people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and bring all the information. We don't take too much of their time, but we make sure they know that we're here to help yeah. and we want to be a part of, of uh, your student's life. I think just the fact that uh, you appear before the kids uh, yeah. in their own setting, yeah. um, you know, gives them thought, yeah. you know, pause yeah. for thought. And I think yeah. the other piece is that they know I have a, a public school oh, sure. uh, background. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something we can talk, I can talk to them about that because I know students. Tell me about sports at Quincy College. Yeah, the Quincy yeah. Granite. How's doing, it doing? Yeah. doing great. Doing uh, great. Baseball. You know, there's uh, 28 or 30, 30 baseball players. Many recruited. You know, by Jack, um, Jack Raymer. Um, and uh, she got, so you have basketball, which they will do very, very well this year. They did great last year with Doug Scott, uh, Quincy High kid, uh, as the as the coach. Uh, doing a great job. So you got the baseball, uh, basketball, uh, and this year for the first time, hockey. Hmm. You know, will be uh, implemented and, and used uh, probably in. They probably start in mid-October practice. So okay. there are twenty at the uh, youth arena. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that should be pretty exciting. You know, seeing the new uniforms and stuff. It, you know what? It, it, it begins to be real because you can talk about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And people say, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's really great. But when you see it, you begin <laughs> to believe it. Yes. You know, yes. so that's that's what we try to do. But those three are great. Plus, we have um, a running club, running and fitness club. And there are over 20 students involved in that trying to extend student life. 
you know? That's the whole, yeah. you know, give them a rounded uh, experience. Yeah, right? yeah. and yeah. we want to get soccer going, especially oh. for, for women. Uh, so Jack has down in Hanover, down there at uh, Starland, there's a pretty large complex. And so we have over 30 students going there one night a week. Okay. You know, they hop into leagues or whatever. So, again, trying to, trying to make sure that, you know, when you come to Quincy College and it's academic, yes, it is, and it's rigorous, yes, it is, but you also have these other things that co other colleges have. Yes. We yep. have a, st a, t a ton of student clubs. You know that students can be long, yep. and now with the in-person uh, increase, maybe there are more students that do that. So, uh, get all these all these pieces of the pie. Great to see you as always, Rick. Yeah. Anything else My we pleasure. should let folks know about right now? No, uh, okay. I think that's great. I appreciate it very, very much. But one more thing. Yeah. When is someone going to interview you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought of that the other day. I said. Boy, the, what you have, you know, where you've been and the things you've seen and been a part of, right? From JDA on. <laughs> they can put that on my epitaph yeah. <laughs> after I'm gone. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Thank you so Always. much. Always. You're yeah. welcome. We got it. Thanks to our crew. We will check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Actually, the week itself looks really nice as we round out September. Mid-70s with sun and clouds today and tomorrow. Uh, looking for a uh, little cooler temperatures here on Wednesday and Thursday, but staying dry. Thanks again to Rick Christopher for Pleasure. joining us. Thank, thank you to you our crew thank and thank you. you for watching. Friday here on the show, Pat Ronan comes over from Father Bills in Main Spring. We'll get an update on their Yaki Resource Center that's under construction over on Broad Street. Meantime, check out our website at any time, qatv.org. Our latest news, information, programs, live streaming, video on demand, and much more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.